So it is the biggest quarterly fall in unemployment since 1997, the biggest increase in employment since records began, and the number of people out of work is at its lowest for nearly five years. The statistics of the recovery are beginning to sound impressive, and the new figures come as world leaders gather in Davos for their annual review of the world economy. Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, is there. Faisal, how big a moment is this? Is it as big as it looks? John, for months we've been trying to get the chance of the Exchequer to say those words, that Tory kryptonite, the phrase green shoots, and he's refused our invitations. But this is more than green shoots, this is recovery. People will argue with whether it's widely spread. People will argue with the quality of the recovery, how balanced the economy is. But just look at the numbers. There's been a sharp fall in unemployment, but there's been a thumping rise in employment too, a record rise. And actually the question that's begged by that is whether it's too good news because it starts to raise questions about how on earth the Bank of England can justify emergency lows in interest rates at a time of record rises in employment. More on that and from Davos later. But first, we have this report from our business correspondent, Sarah Smith, who's been meeting young workers who have had the luck to get their first job. Yes, it really is some economic good news. More people have jobs, fewer are out of work, and that helps the whole economy to recover. Unemployment has fallen to 2.3 million. That's down by 167,000 making the unemployment rate now just 7.1%. It is the biggest quarterly fall since 1997. There are now over 30 million people in work. That's up 450,000 from a year ago. Youth unemployment has been a particularly stubborn problem, but that too has now fallen, making a huge difference to the young people who've recently found work. And obviously I've got a job now, and it's my first job. Are a lot of your friends unemployed? Um, yeah, most of my friends are unemployed. Um, they're just basically bumming around, so I wouldn't really call them my friends now. I've changed like who I sort of hang about with and who I keep company with now. Do you so, think you've changed as a person? Yeah, I've definitely changed. I've grown up a lot more, and I know what I want from life now. Well, it's changed my life. Um, I don't know. I, I can do a lot more things now. I, I enjoy waking up for work and seeing my work colleagues and stuff, and uh, just enjoy everyday life now. Working. Does it make you feel different about yourself? Yeah, yeah, I feel much more responsible, like adult and stuff. But those who help these young people find their jobs think we shouldn't get complacent. Man, I think the reality is, okay, there's been a drop in long-term youth unemployment, you know, over the last, um, this recent season, but if you actually look back from three years ago, we're still at record levels, you know, it's gone up significantly. It's nowhere near back to what it was two or three years ago. We've got a long way to go. And even at that point, there was issues with youth unemployment. Unemployment never rose quite as high as it could have, in part because so many people took part-time jobs even though they really needed full-time work. Today's statistics show many of these new positions are full-time. Over the year to November, the number of people in full-time employment increased by 457,000 to 22 million. The number in part-time roles, by contrast, fell 7,000 to 8.1 million. And there are now over a million over 65s working. That's up more than 10% on the year before. We've seen the biggest increase in employment in Britain's history. That's great news because every one of those jobs is a family more secure. And it's evidence that our long-term economic plan is working. Among all those rosy statistics showing that unemployment is down and employment is up, there is one less optimistic number. Wages are growing by less than 1%, just 0.9%. And while inflation is running at 2%, that means workers' paychecks are not keeping up with rising prices and people will continue to feel the squeeze. One other sour note, we aren't getting any more productive. And until productivity rises, until we get more output from each worker, we can't expect to see wages rise anytime soon.